Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps you out in your math stuff. Uh, if it does, just go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Really help me out. But at the same time, you know, it is a math channel, so I understand if you don't. But uh, thanks for watching the video anyways. Now on this problem, it does tell us that this is a one-to-one -one function. We can tell it specifically because the exponent of the x there is a 3. Uh, which doesn't mean it's really guaranteed to be a one-to-one -one function, but uh, it's a good way to kind of tell if it's possible. If it's even, it's rarely possible that it's ever going to be a one-to-one -one function. Uh, and that's true for indexes of square roots as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph this specific function. And to do that, I'm going to make a table first. And I'm going to choose values of x, which I have there. And I'm going to find the corresponding f of x values. So, for example, the negative 2. If x is negative 2, I got negative 2 cubed. That would be a negative 8 minus 1 is a negative 9. And I've taken the liberty to go ahead and solve for the rest of those, which is something you should be able to do in a class like 1010. So, if you're struggling with that, find some of my videos that show you how to graph a non-linear equation. Some of them are linear as well, the examples that I have um, where we make a table as well. Just find something where you use a table to graph an equation. All right, there's that function in red. So to reflect this across that line y equals x, which is that blue dashed or dotted line on the graph, it'd be kind of difficult to eyeball that, especially since it's non-linear. So let's go and find the inverse function of that. So that would be y equals x cubed minus 1, but in order to invert that, I'm going to exchange the x and the y, and I'm going to solve for y now. So, first thing I would do is I would add 1 to both sides of this equation, which now gives me x plus 1 equals y cubed. And solve for just y by itself, I would have to cube root both sides, which would give me the y. That's what I need. I'm going to put the inverse symbol on that, which looks like an exponent of negative 1, but it is not an exponent. And that is the cube root of x plus 1. And now we'll look at a table. I want to choose values of x, which will hopefully make a lot of sense to this. I'm going to make it proportional, so. I'm going to start with x is negative 2 and work my way up one at a time on this thing. So to start off, and again I am looking at this equation right here, which is inverted, an inverted equation from this f of x. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. That cubed, I'm sorry, the cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1. And I can put that point right on my graph right now. A negative 2, negative 1 would be this point right here. So here's the problem with, with what we have going for us right now is we need a perfect cubes to really make this come out really nice. So, and we have values of that which will make that work, but um, we're going to have to change that last value to 2. What I mean by that is, see how we have a negative 1? If we put it into this expression right here, or the equation, then it's going to give us negative 1 plus 1 is 0. The cube root of 0 is just 0. That's not bad. Uh, same with 0 plus 1 is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. And if I do 1 plus 1 is 2, the cube root of 2 is undefined. I'm sorry, it's irrational. So I'm going to change that one, and I want my next perfect cube root, or perfect cube, would be something like 8. So I'm going to have to take 7 plus the 1, that's 8. Cube root of that is 2. The next cube root would be 27. Now to get there, I would have to make that 26. That point's not going to fit on the graph anyways. So let me go ahead and graph the points that I do have. 
Now, it, it's going to be helpful for me to find another point on this, but I'm going to look to the left of the point that I have, farthest left in green, which is a negative 2, negative 1. So the next value I'm looking at would be something like, I don't know, maybe uh, <clears throat> negative 9. And here's why I'm using negative 9. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. Cube root of negative 8 is a negative 2. So that allows me now to put this point on there, negative 9, negative 2. Now it's going to be a lot easier for me to graph this line, seeing what exactly what's happening, especially on this graph. And we have something like this. Another thing that you'll want to take note of is that at or on the um, axis of symmetry, which is y equals x, where it's reflecting, they do cross at that same point, which I've highlighted there in purple. But this would do it for this one. Uh, again, we have our original function right here. We found the inverse function, and then, of course, we've graphed it.